When I was 14, I saw Donnie Darko for the first time. I thought it was a life-changing experience. It's immensely quotable, unorthodox, an instant cult classic about a boy and his bunny. It's a horror psychological thriller that deals with time paradoxes. The hell? That's me, except about 53 haircuts ago. That's 14-year-old me. I'm here from the past to your present. Wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey paradox. Hey, time paradoxes. Donnie Darko doesn't care. This gives me an idea. I know that 14-year-old me adored this film. But what do I think as a 20-year-old? Here's a film review. The performances are really eye-opening. I feel a standout is the late Patrick Swayze, in a surprising turn as the motivational speaker Jim Cunningham, who turns out to be a closeted pedophile, steals the show. Swayze is so charismatic, and it's really compelling to see him in this nuanced, very sinister role playing against type. The world truly lost a great actor. The cameraman and cinematographer truly deserve applause. The film has ingenious imagery and innovative shots, like the single shot following Donnie and his friends through the high school while Tears for Fears Head Over Heels plays in the background. All the elements combine to truly make you feel that you're in the backyard of America in the 80s. The genius of the film is that it takes the mundane and turns it horrifying. You truly feel a sense of apocalyptic dread the entire movie. And Frank the Bunny Rabbit really isn't helping you feel at ease in the suburban world gone sinister. And yet watching at the age of 20, I can't help but feel some qualms about it. As much as I love this film, Richard Kelly is one of those directors who you think is a genius until you see uh, the rest of his film. <coughs> George Lucas! Everybody in 2001 was on the Donnie Darko bandwagon. We didn't quite understand what the hell happened in the movie. The pacing, the characters, and the performances really made it feel like Richard Kelly knew what he was doing. Everything about the narrative, even the most convoluted sections, felt purposeful and necessary, like an impenetrable classic novel that no one actually gets and happens to be full of scary bunny rabbits and tears for fear sounds. Of course, fans were eager to peel away the layers. I, I mean, um, him, devoted entire blogs and forums dedicated to unraveling the mysteries of the film. Hey, did you know that Donnie Darko was shot in 28 days, mirroring the time that Frank prophesizes is left for the world in the film? In fact, the number 8 recurs repeatedly throughout the film, starting with the year it takes place, 1988. Mathematics uses a horizontal 8 to symbolize infinity, and in Chinese and Egyptian culture, the number expresses the totality of the universe. Coincidence? I think not. Everyone was so busy feeling good about themselves for being so smart, they forgot the possibility that the movie, while quotable and immensely enjoyable, might not make any sense. Here's the thing. Contrary to what countless stoners may tell you, the plot of Donnie Darko really isn't that complicated. Spoiler alert. Here's a quick recap of the entire movie. A. Donnie narrowly avoids being killed by a jet engine that falls through his bedroom. B. Donnie does weird shit for a couple of weeks, indirectly causing terrible things to happen, including getting some people killed. Or directly, in the case of the guy he shoots in the face. C. Donnie goes back in time and lets himself be crushed by the jet engine, thereby preventing all the deaths he caused. It's essentially a reversal of It's a Wonderful Life, where the main character, instead of deciding to live because the community needs him, the character decides to die because the community would be better off without him. Except, here's another idea. How about not letting yourself get crushed by a jet engine? Donnie could have used the trip to the past and his knowledge of future events to just fix everything that happened. I don't see how killing yourself is really the option anymore. Actually, future me, Richard Kelly explains it all in explicit detail on the DVD featurettes and in the official companion book to Donnie Darko, The Philosophy of Time Travel. Donnie caused the timeline to diverge, and thus he is the one who is destined to set it right. He is the living receiver and is given special powers, as well as Frank as a spiritual guide. That's incredibly convoluted and... 
to manipulate the living and the dead to rectify all of existence. You're a nerd. I give this movie four freaky bunnies out of five. While it's enigmatic and cool, a mystique and mystery is no substitute for substance. The lighting, shots, performances, soundtrack, dialogue, and overall nostalgia for the movie covers up any flaws in my humble opinion. Donnie Darko is the most underrated film of all time! Just because something's obscure does not make it a masterpiece. But... Better movies than Donnie Darko? All right, past me, calm down. It seems I have a rare opportunity here with you, past me. So, don't move over that carrot chick. She's cool, but she's not for you. There will eventually be this girl named Jill, and I screwed it all up. Don't screw it up. She was the one. I wake up some nights in a cold sweat, and I just sing a Lionel Richie songs, and I... I have a wedding ring. He, he did it. He worked it out with Jill. I changed the timeline! Except now I wear Hawaiian shirts and a cell phone holster. This is the darkest possible timeline.